with multiple years of print on demand experience, I have definitely seen my fair share of trends come and go, suggestions, tips people are throwing out, come into fashion kind of, and then be thrown out. Now, there are all sorts of people that are still recommending some of these tips I'm going to be sharing with you, but they are completely outdated. So in this list, I'm gonna be telling you what you should stay far away from in 2024 if you are starting a print on demand shop or you already have one, but maybe it's not as successful as you would want it to be. Maybe it's because you're trying some of these really out dated tips. Now, I definitely don't want to waste any of your time, so let's just jump right into this list of tips you should stay far away from this next year. Now, the first one is something that definitely may have worked maybe five or ten years ago for print-on-demand sellers, but it is not going to be a strategy that is going to get you success in print on demand. And that is treating holidays as niches in themselves. So a lot of print on demand sellers, myself included, talk about it's really important to sell holiday themed designs. However, I think a lot of people get confused and they think that they should just be selling some generic holiday design. So maybe for Christmas coming up, they are just wanting to sell a Santa shirt or something that says Merry Christmas. Just a really generic design that goes for the whole holiday. Same thing with something like Valentine's Day. They just want to make a Valentine's Day heart design on a pink shirt and they think it's going to sell really, really well. But the reality of it is that holidays in and of themselves are not a good niche to target. They are just way too broad and they kind of transcend the category of niche. It's kind of more than that. So what you really should be doing instead of just maybe making a generic St. Patrick's Day design, generic Easter designs, is next year you really want to focus on being hyper specific and cross niching those holidays with other niches. Now, this is a strategy I talk about all the time on my channel here, and I've actually created a free downloadable resource for you guys down below my cross niching guide if you want to download that. But what I teach is that if you want to be targeting holidays, which is still a great holiday, you need to include something else that will have people looking for that specific type of item and going to have less competition. So, so instead of just creating a generic Easter design, maybe you create a Easter design for a beagle owner. Or if you want to create Mother's Day designs, you can cross that with something like an interest. So maybe sewing or crocheting or baking. So anytime you have a holiday, I really think it's important to capitalize on getting less competition by crossing it with something people are actually really looking for. You can waste a ton of time making these very generic designs. That's a big mistake. I see so many new sellers making is they're just made 10, 20, 30 generic Christmas designs and none of them are going to sell because they're competing against hundreds of thousands of other people. So definitely leave behind just making generic designs and make sure if you are targeting holidays, you are crossing them with something else that is going to make your design have less competition. Now, the next outdated print on demand piece of advice or trend that I have seen a lot of people still really promoting is really, really focusing on scalable designs. So if you aren't familiar with a scalable design, this is the type of shirt where it could say something like world's best teacher. And then by swapping out the word teacher with mom or dad or pet trainer or librarian, you have a bunch of different niche possibilities. Now, this still can be a good type of product to create. I definitely have created my fair share of scalable designs, but I definitely find that a lot of people suggest making hundreds and thousands of scalable designs to be able to really increase the numbers of your shop. So print on demand, it really is a numbers game. You want to have a ton of designs posted to your shops to make sure that some of those are going to become best sellers. However, we want these to be very high quality designs that aren't just thrown together scalable designs. I think that when this strategy was first really being implemented and successful, not a ton of people were making these scalable designs, but now it seems like everyone is using some kind of automation software and they're just creating thousands of scalable designs and uploading them to every platform every single day. So there is just so much competition for these generic kind of designs. So instead of doing that, I think you should really prioritize making unique one-of-a-kind designs, even if that's going to take a little bit more time than creating a scalable design like this. 
Now, one way you can really take advantage of the time saving ability of say a scalable design is you can take advantage of using templates that you either have from a site like Kittle or something, or you can create your own. So this just means that if you have a standard font or style of shirt that you're coming back to time and time again, that you can kind of save a template version of that. And then anytime you have a new phrase or a new niche, you can just plug that into the template that you have saved. So you're not recreating the design over and over again because you're just reusing some of those templates that you go to over and over again. So if you're thinking if you should be creating some scalable designs this next year, I definitely would just skip it and try to focus on researching really good one-of-a-kind niches with less competition instead of just trying to get as many designs out and hoping that maybe one or two of them sell with those scalable designs. Now the next piece of really outdated print-on-demand advice is going to be doing your niche research and then finding trending designs and just making your own copied version of that. Now, I think when there was just way less people selling print on demand, this may have worked really well. If you found a trending phrase that was selling, you could just make your own version of that. So maybe you just use slightly different font or you just change the design a little bit, posted it maybe on a different color shirt. But in reality, the design was just so similar to the one that was already best selling. So nowadays, there is so much competition in print on demand. So if you see a best selling design, chances are a bunch of other people also saw that and they are just creating almost exact copies of what is selling well. But this isn't really a great strategy going into 2024 because if a product already has made sales, say on a place like Amazon, it's going to be in those top pages it's going to probably have some reviews, it's going to have sales. And so a lot of times people are not really scrolling down the page, they're just clicking on one of the first listings that they see especially if it looks really similar to a lot of the other listings, they're gonna go with the one that has those five-star reviews. So if you just try to do exactly what you saw somebody else do, the chances are your product is not going to get any sales. So when you are doing your niche research, if you see a phrase or a niche that is selling really well, instead you wanna be thinking about how you can transform that and create something really new and one of a kind. So maybe this is an all text design, white text on a black shirt. And so you want to maybe add a big colorful graphic, use some different style font, maybe colorful lettering, put it on a red shirt instead of a black one. So that can be a strategy you can actually use to capitalize on finding one of those trendy niches, but also putting your own spin on it. So that way, if someone does see yours, it doesn't look exactly the same as the one that is already selling well. So people could be incentivized to purchase yours if yours is completely different, if it's really doing something better than anyone has done before. So this year, leave behind just copying designs that are selling well and try to find your own way to stand out and improve on every single trending phrase and niche you find. Now, the next thing that you really need to make sure you are not doing in 2024 because it's going to get you nowhere is if you have a subscription service to a place like Creative Fabrica, or even if you have something like Canva or Kittle, if you are tempted to just download those bundles of like pre-made graphics that they have of templates that are on Creative Fabrica and post them to your shirts and just upload a ton of those as really easy designs, you are doing a disservice to yourself. And the same thing on a place like Kittle or Canva, they have a bunch of amazing templates that you can use but you're doing a huge disservice to yourself if you're just downloading them as is or with practically no changes whatsoever. So even though that might not exactly be against any rules, in Kittle's terms of service, you could just use their pre-made templates as they are. But if you had that idea, chances are hundreds of other people have done that same thing and already uploaded them. So again, we are trying to actually stand out by doing something new. So if you're going to use a subscription service like Creative Fabric, which I do personally love. I'll have them linked down below as well as Kittle. But you want to be downloading graphics and then adding your own text, your own other elements, combining them with other graphics to make something totally new. Because if you download this pack of maybe groovy Halloween graphics and slap them on shirts, you're competing with a bunch of people that have those exact same graphics too. So again, they're going to go with the ones that have already sold when a customer goes to purchase. They're probably not going to scroll back and pick yours because 
because they've already seen it. So if you really want to stand out and make sales, you need to be transforming the tools that you use. Now, you definitely do not have to make everything from scratch, but just by combining different things, changing colors, making your own combinations can be a huge benefit to your shop. Now, this next tip, I definitely heard a few years ago a lot of people preaching about doing this, but it certainly is not a piece of advice that I would be following in 2024 and beyond. And that is to be copying titles and descriptions from other products in the niche you're trying to target. Now, I've heard it said before that, you know, you don't want to redo all of the work that someone else has already done. So you can just take what they are doing and you can copy it on the product that you are posting. So not only do I think this kind of really isn't fair to the original creator who made that description and title, they probably put a lot of thought into it. But more than that, it's just not doing yourself any services. So once again, their product has been posted longer than yours. It probably has sales on it. So if you are posting the exact same title and description copied from them on your product, chances are that the algorithm is going to lead people to the product that already has sales instead of yours. So you want to be finding any way you can to try something a little bit new to improve the SEO that other people have used. So I definitely think it's fine to look at other listings to see what they're doing with their SEO, with their description, what keywords they're using. And you can certainly take that as inspiration. Use some of those elements in your own listing. That's certainly what I do. I kind of take the information out there and I create my own version of what has really done well. But I never, ever copy exactly word for word what I have seen other people listing products with. So if you have been doing that strategy, I definitely would stop that in 2024. Now, the next piece of advice that I think we definitely should leave behind in the new year is actually trying to make your prices as low as possible to compete with a lot of other people. So on Etsy, on Amazon, it's really common for a lot of new shops to price their items super, super low because they feel like they can't break into the market unless they price their products super, super competitively. Now, this just runs into a few different problems. Now, one of them is there is always someone who is going to be able to sell their products a little bit cheaper than you. So if we are all just trying to put our prices as cheap as possible, it's kind of a race to the bottom where no one is making any true profit. But the amazing thing about print on demand is we can stand out and make really unique products that aren't out there anywhere. So what I have found in my own business is that when people are shopping for things like gifts, which is what happens to be a lot of print on demand items. It doesn't really matter if something costs five or six dollars more and this thing is cheaper. If they find a shirt or a mug they really connect with and they can't find that exact thing anywhere else, they're gonna pay the extra five dollars for that specific one that they want. So if you are just trying to compete with the lowest of low prices, that doesn't even guarantee that people are going to pick yours. If they find a design that they connect with more, they're probably going to purchase that one. So the strategy that I really like to implement is kind of going for that median price range. So when you are attempting to create a product in a new niche, I take a look at all the products that are selling well in that niche. I kind of take note of the lowest prices and some of the highest prices and I try to pick somewhere in the middle. So people do like to feel like they are getting a deal, they're not paying top dollar. So I would stay away from pricing your products as high as possible, even though some really established shops can do that, but I definitely wouldn't be pricing my products really, really low either. Typically on apparel items, I like to be able to make at least $5 profit when everything is said and done. So I make sure to keep my prices in that range, even for really, really new products that I've just listed. Now, another strategy that I see a lot of people have questions about is there are some people, especially on Etsy, that they kind of like to game the system and make their prices appear lower. Now, one way that people do this is by having different items listed within one listing. So maybe they have a bunch of family shirts and sweatshirts, but they also have listed like a baby onesie or a baby t-shirt, which is significantly cheaper. So that when people are looking at Etsy, the item appears to be like $8.99. But when you actually click onto the listing, you find that all of the shirts are priced $25.99. It's only that little baby onesie that has the design that has that low price. 
So I don't really like to suggest people implement this strategy. I think in some ways it actually can annoy the customer when they thought that they were gonna get this really great price, they clicked on it for that reason, and then they found out that the price is the same, if not higher than a lot of the other listings too. So if you're thinking about if you should do this strategy, I really do not suggest it. Now, the next tip that I definitely think that you don't have to follow in 2024 is kind of twofold. So there's definitely two sides of the coin when it comes Comes to this question or issue and that is if you should have a niche shop or a general shop for your print on demand business to be successful. Now there are a lot of people that say that in 2024 you're going to have to only do a niche shop to be successful. No longer can you just post a bunch of different niches in one shop and have traffic regularly coming to you making purchases. But I still really don't think that is the case. I definitely do love to have a niche specific store. It allows you to do some things that maybe you wouldn't be able to with a general shop. So if you want to try your hand at a niche specific store, you have a very good idea that is proven to make sales. I think you should go for in 2024. Just go all in on that one particular niche. But if you really don't feel like you have a good strategy, a good niche that you know is going to sell well, I know that general shops still do really, really well. So that means you can be posting designs and products from a bunch of different niches. And the reality is that most of the time when a person is purchasing one of your items, they're not even clicking on your shop. They're just purchasing directly from the listing page and then they never even see the other items you have to offer. So I think either way you go, you really can't go wrong. So definitely don't let anyone tell you that you have to try one strategy or another to be successful. Both of them can be highly successful. I would just say that if you are going to go for a niche specific shop, you need to have some kind of validation that that niche is doing well. So either you have made sales in that niche in your own shop, or you have done extensive research to prove that this could do really, really well for you. Now, there are so many other things that I wish that I knew when I first got started in print on demand. So if you are starting a new shop or just not getting any traction, I would definitely watch this video next. It's going to have tons of things you can implement that I wish I had known a lot sooner in my journey. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.